Hello ladies, gentlemen, and those that don't identify themselves in that binary. I'm the Ski, and welcome to my Pokemon Shield Nuzlocke. And here we are in Motostoke. This episode is going to be a lot of cinematics, but there's a few battles, including one with our rival Hop, near the end. But here we get a lovely view of Motostoke, the steam-powered city. It's a lovely aesthetic, lots of cogs, lots of steam moving, and you'll see steam coming out of grates throughout the city. All in all, very pleasing. At this point, I thought I'd just talk through the team as we've got it at the moment, with all five Pokémon that we've captured. So first, Snorunt. Overall, no, nothing spectacular, no real standout attributes, but overall it's working. With Powder Snow and Astonish, there's some pretty good attacks and double team great defensive moves. Korax, again, nothing really outstanding, speed's increasing, but flying normal and dark attacks with home claws to help set it up to attack later on. Fried Out, our combi. Not so great in general, but special attack becoming stronger, and with Struggle Bug, Bug Bite, Sweet Scent and Gust, we've got a nice range of attacks that we can use. Mulder is doing excellently, high defences, quite a lot of hit points, and the moveset, Reflect and Light Screen, discussed last episode, very happy with the defensive contribution. Rupert is our newest, unfortunately its ability is Klutz, which isn't great as it can't use any held items, basically a useless ability, and has no fighting moves yet. Hopefully soon we'll pick up a fighting move and be able to uh, take that to our enemies and have good coverage. So after that, we progress into Motostoke and immediately are summoned over by Sonya to the Pokemon Center. In there, she's going to tell us all about the use of the PC. Obviously, anyone who's played Pokemon knows how the PC works in general, so I'm not going to bother going through all of that. But she does tell us to update our trainer card, and this is what I've made for us. Here is the Skis Trainer card. This is mostly used for multiplayer online battles, but it's a nice customizable aesthetic to show what you're playing as, how you're trying to get across. After that, Sonya gives you another wonderful view of Motorstoke, and it shows the amount of effort they put in. Because if you look at the top right hand corner of the screen, you'll be able to see they've got a rotating gear just moving round. It adds nothing but aesthetic to the city. And it really gets across why this is the steam-powered city. And again, as mentioned before, steam coming out of the grates along the street. And at the end you can see the big steam power glyph that will be going up in a moment. All in all, interesting way of showing off what they've been doing in the design of the game. And I've just moved us forward through towards the, the lift and Leon will arrive with his Charizard mentioning once again that he's bad at directions, something which doesn't really come up in plot, but it's a character quirk, I suppose. And Leon comes to uh, talk to us about how well we've been doing as a trainer, how well we've got here, and gives us some mystic water. This is actually um, dynamic based on which starter you picked, and unfortunately we don't have a water type that this would be useful for, but I'm sure later on it'll be very helpful. After that gift, we walk forward, get onto the lift, and head off towards the Gym Challenge opening ceremony. So having got off the lift, we walk forward and see a Pokeball-headed individual who uh, tells us he's going to give us a reward and gives us a Pokeball. Always useful, we can't buy them, let's get as many as we can as we're moving on. But this is the ball guy, we'll see him throughout the course of the game, hopefully getting some Pokeballs from him each time. And in front of us, you'll be able to see Motostoke Stadium. It's not actually the first gym, that's going to be a, a bit further round after a couple more routes, but we can progress forward and go and see Hop as we head in to the stadium to find out more about this opening ceremony we're going to take part in. Hop, again, super excited. He's very excited. A bit nervous, but of course he's there to get his legend right. Make sure the world knows our names. So, we walk in this case, to each side to speak to the league staff, just telling us a bit more about their job. But mostly we're going to go in and we're going to get all prepared for the big opening ceremony, which is part of the gym challenge. This is the first time we've been inside a stadium and it's a bit different to the gyms of previous games in that you just have this opening area because the gym itself will be behind this and will have its own challenge for us to get through. 
it's a nice way of changing up the sort of walk through a minor puzzle and fight challenges by making the puzzle sort of a big central part of the gameplay. And here we see someone who's going to become one of our rivals in the future as a modern Pokemon game with multiple rivals, uh, but someone there who seems a bit sort of up themselves and very arrogant is going to be one of our rivals moving forward. So we speak to this nice person from the uh, from the gym challenge, who's going to tell us that you know anyone who's been endorsed by the champion must be pretty special. Absolutely, we are. Hot very much is getting confident despite his nerves, and we're asked to select a number for our uniform. Again, another just nice piece of customization. It just changes the number you get in the challenge, and I'm going to pick number 26 because that was a number of Ledley King when he played the Tottenham Hotspur. So, we get number 26, we get a challenge band to identify ourselves as a gym challenger. This makes no difference in the game, but it's quite nice to sort of build up the world behind it. And we're told that we can stay in the hotel overnight for free as members of the gym challenge. Having completed the sign up, we then go to the budgie drop in to stay overnight before the opening ceremony. And as we walk in, there's Sonia standing in front of a statue of Song with a sword and shield, looking up at the sky. Sonia explains to us that if she's going to look into these mysterious Pokémon, she's going to look into the legends of the Galar region and work out whether they could be related to it. And uh, shockingly, the hero with the sword and shield... I know, right? Subtle. ...may have been related to it because there was something called the Darkest Day when Pokémon were becoming giant and rampaging everywhere, very similar to the Dynamax and Gigantamax phenomenon that we've got going on now. So uh, Sonia is looking into that and obviously this will progress. This is the background plot of the game while we progress with our gym challenge. So she asks us to let her know if we find anything out. And of course we will. We're good people. But as we go up to the desk, you'll see there's a group of similarly dressed people standing in the way blocking us, but asks if we're up for a battle, and of course we are. So here they are, Team Yell, with their matching sort of punk rock outfits, and their weirdly good colour coordination, with a nice big X between their eyes there, really showing off what they go for. And we've got quite a few battles, and I've sped up the footage to make that a bit easier for us. So first comes out the Galarian Zigzagoon which is a dark type Pokemon. And uh, obviously we put Rupert out, but with no fighting moves, Rupert doesn't help much. So we move to Korax and Korax will proceed to peck it down, essentially. The Zigzagoon is a remarkably high level compared to the previous fights we've been having. So the peck doesn't quite do a two hit kill, but a three hit KO more than sufficient. Unfortunately, we do take a crit, which means that Korax has taken a fair bit of damage and switching into Korax now isn't an option moving forward. We defeat the first Team Yell Grunt, and immediately the second Team Yell Grunt comes forward and says, I'll fight you too. So we get into a battle again. Out comes a Nicket, and we switch out Rupert, because, well, as you can see, the move's not very effective. So, having a think, we go to Fried Out, because Bug-type is super effective, and it's not weak to Dark-type at all. The Nicket uses Quick Attack, which is very sensible, get the hit in before anything comes in. But we use Bug Bite, which does a remarkably high amount of damage, not quite the one-hit KO, but high enough that we can progress through the fight quickly without much danger. Having dispatched the second Team Yell Grunt, we have the interesting um, point that Hop is going to arrive. As Hop arrives, he notes something's going on and doesn't want us to get ahead of uh, him. So he heals off our Pokémon and we have a two-on-two -two battle. It's the first double battle of the game. Definitely not the last. So Team Yell Grunts send out the same Pokémon as we had. And we start with Rupert. He's a bit of switch training in general, but we go to Fried Out because Fried Out does everything that we need to against Dark-type Pokémon. 
So Wulu's defense card to begin with means that Wulu can really be the tank of the uh, situation. Well, when it comes to our turn, we'll start getting those bug moves out and start taking out different Pokemon. I choose to go for Zigzagoon because the Nickit's going to use Quick Attack, so it doesn't matter if we knock it out because it will still have got its attack off. Unfortunately, Wulu goes for Zigzagoon, rendering that strategy worthless. Still, second Bug Bite takes out Zigzagoon. And we're left two on one. And Wulu, for some reason, uses Growl rather than Tackle. But as Nikit responds with Tail Whip, no damage either way. Everything works for us. So, a Bug Bite after a Quick Attack. Fried Out takes out the Nikit and Team Yell have been defeated twice, each of them twice, in short order. So our punk rocking Team Yell are telling us that, you know, everything's gone wrong. But then, one of the gym challengers that we saw earlier appears. Marnie. Someone who's going to become one of our rivals in the future. And comes and tells off Team Yell. She comes and tells us that uh, Team Yell are, essentially, her rowdy fan club. Obviously, Team Yell are a mixture of punks and football hooligans, and uh, she is the object of their affection, really. She, though, seems quite sweet and uh, apologises for them, and uh, Hop's pretty happy that someone is there with their own fan club. I mean, any fan club will always make the gym challenge a bit more I know a bit more special because you'll have people really cheering people on and that can only be good for what well, is essentially the biggest spectacle in all of the Galar region. So we go to the desk, let them know we're here and the League has booked us a room to stay in. So we go to bed, ready for the opening ceremony. The opening ceremony is one of the best bits of cinematics that has been put into a Pokemon game. You get this big, expansive stadium, the chairman of the league and his assistant standing there, right in the centre, to the loud, baying crowd all around. It shows that this is the big spectacle of the Galar region, and that there's people watching from home, there's people watching in the crowd, there's people and Pokemon together in the crowd. It's everything that the Galar region is all about. Some nice footage there with Munchlax sat in the crowd, with a Sobble nearby. So it's a real world building event, as well as being you know, the centerpiece of the game. So there's the gym challenge, it's being hyped up for everyone. And uh, Chairman Rose there, in introducing us to the gym leaders, which is something we don't see in Pokemon games previously. I mean, usually you go to a town and you meet a gym leader, they're not doing their job, they're doing something else. Whereas here, we get this opening montage, essentially, of the gym leaders walking out. Sort of showing, showing them as a sort of... I know, a boy band, a squad from, um, squad from a hero film, you know. But these are celebrities. They all get introduced you know, one by one. Kabu, the fire veteran here. And so, again, showing the crowd cheering for them is that these are you know, the celebrities and sports stars of this region. And uh, I think that you know, it gives a sense of scale that perhaps the previous games didn't have. And yes, there was the Pokemon challenge, and uh, people would go do the gyms, then go to the Elite Four. This, it's a big spectacle, it's a tournament. The gym leaders are people that have proven themselves worthy and everyone knows their names and who they are. It's not just the local gym leader that everyone knows. It's sort of a cross everywhere spectacle. And then of course we get to see the first real sight of ourselves walking out in our gym challenger outfit. Yeah, a nice uniform aesthetic, you can see the number 026 on the back like we chose earlier. Walking out with all the other gym challengers and that it's not you know, us going through ready to challenge the champion. It's everyone together. I really like this. After we've changed into our normal outfit, Hop comes out, and obviously he's an excitable fella in general, but he's so excited to tell us about how he felt 
I mean, admittedly, it must have felt amazing standing there with that massive crowd. And then Chairman Rose comes over to introduce himself to us, because if the champions endorsed us, he's going to be really interested in how we do. So the fact that he sees that we've got Dynamax bands, he's happy to see that we can Dynamax the Pokemon. Obviously for his company it's going to be good because it will give an interesting spectacle, but also his company developed the Dynamax bands, so he's quite happy to see that work being done. Obviously he's got urgent business to attend to, he's a busy man. He runs the Pokemon League, and the Pokemon League here, as I said previously, it's the biggest deal in Galar. So Leon comes and tells us that we need to do more than train our Pokemon, we need to train ourselves, you know, going through that the thing that Pokemon tries to push forward, it's all about friendship, making sure you're a proper team, you and your Pokemon. So we need to head off to Turf Field, where we'll go and find the Grass-type gym leader, Milo. So we need to head over towards Route 3. As you can see, we've got Route 3, a cave, and then Route 4 between us and the gym. That'll give us a chance to train up and be ready. Though the chairman on his way out was asked for a gift to be delivered, which is wonderful. And that is the access to the flying taxis. So in previous games where you've used the HM fly to get around, here we have flying taxis that will take us around to where we need to go as long as we've been there before. It's a nice way of doing it, saves people needing to have the move fly if they don't want it, and it's very similar to the last generation where the moves that are required for the game weren't tied to you having a Pokemon with those HMs. So we uh, head off towards Turfield and to Route 3, and on our way we come across Hop. So I saw that, so before I got to Hop I thought I'll just make sure that I can uh, get my Pokemon healed up, speak to everyone in the Pokemon Center, pick up any free stuff they want to give me. Because if I got something that would make the, you know, my Pokemon stronger with their held items, the better it would be. As Rupert doesn't have many fighting type moves, I moved Rupert down the order and decided that Mulder could go up front. Defensive Pokemon to begin with, so we knew what we were doing. So heading out to meet Hop. Hop's waiting, ready to have a battle, get a bit of training in, you know, rivals pushing one another and all that. So Hop gets ready and has three Pokemon as he did last time, and opens with Wooloo. So we've sent out Mulder to begin with. Now the strategy here essentially is Mulder should be able to take out the Wooloo and then do something to the follow-up Pokemon, which is presumably going to be the Score Bunny. So Mulder, putting up Reflect, Wooloo's primarily going to be using Tackle as an attacking move. It's a physical defensive move to block um, that, so Reflect, Tackle works for me. Next we've got Confusion. If we can make Wooloo confused and hit itself, that does a lot of our work for us. That's the strategy at this point in the fight. As you can see, Confusion's doing somewhere between a quarter and a third damage, so we should be able to keep that up and move through the fight fairly easily. Yeah. Critical hit moves it down to within one confusion range. Hop again commenting on critical hits. It's quite nice. If you're not so familiar with the game, Hop commenting on what's going on. It's great. But of course he uses a potion to bring Wooloo back to high hit points, which means that we're going to have to take a few more hits before the Wooloo goes down. The Mulder might be in a bit of a precarious situation when it comes to fighting the Score Bunny. Tackle not doing much damage at all, and Confusion just working through. Now the Reflect's worn off, we're definitely going to take a bit more damage, but it's not enough for us to be particularly worried. Confusion takes down Hop's Wooloo, and we'll note that the next Pokemon coming out is going to be Scorbunny. Now, Mulder being a bug type, is not really in favour of Score Bunny being there. Fire against Bug, not the matchup we want. However, we know Score Bunny has some pretty good attack, but Mulder's got pretty good defence. And if Mulder's going to uh, 
be useful in this, we need to put up the light screen, because that will lessen the ember attack, which I'm sure is coming from Scorbunny later. And we may as well try a confusion. We're at half hit HP, we should be fine. We can take a growl, absolutely. We don't use our attack stat, we're using our special attack stat. So I'm pretty confident that Molda can stay in here. Confusion does between a fifth and a quarter, but with those half hit points still, continued to use Confusion. And with 12 hit points left and seeing the damage the tackle did, and remember we've got a light screen not a reflect up, so we're not taking that much damage, I wasn't particularly worried. So in comes the Ember, which we know is going to be super effective. However, that will be halved by the light screen, and Mulder's down to 5 hit points. It's not worth keeping Mulder out at this point. So Mulder swaps out, and we're going to go for Korax. Korax is definitively the best Pokémon for this job, but as we saw last time we fought Hop, if there's some Growls coming in, it's really going to reduce the effectiveness of Korax's damage. And almost predictably, Score Bunny Growl on the switch. So with the light screen wearing off, we don't want to get hit by an Ember, but of course, getting hit by anything at this point wouldn't be great. We take the tackle and use Peck, which drops Score Bunny down to within a Peck or two of going down entirely. Here we learn that Scorbunny's learnt a quick attack and manages to do quite an amount of damage to us, but our peck is enough to take down Scorbunny, leaving us well in hand to be able to take this fight when the Rookity is sent out by Hop, provided Hop's using the same team as before. Interestingly, as the game goes on, Hop does change up his Pokémon based on how things have been doing, so it shows that it's not just, as in previous games, the team of six that gets increasingly better, Hop does chop and change as if he's been learning throughout the gym challenge, which I really like. So Korax versus a Rookidy. Korax is on just over half hits, so goes for Peck. But the, the Rookidy outspeeds Korax, and we see that's actually quite a bit of damage. The crit is more than half hits against the Rookidy, but we, we, if we take a crit, we might well go down. So I swap into Mrs. Snowy. Mrs. Snowy has Powder Snow, it's super effective against flying types, this sh should be the end of the battle for us. So Rookie, the enemy Rookity there comes in with a peck, Mrs. Snowy, shivering away, uses Powder Snow, and as you can see here, flattens Rookity. So with our type matchup completed, Hop's final Pokemon goes down to the critical hit. We are free to move on towards Route 3. Mrs. Snowy gains a level, I'm very happy with that. The more levelling up we can do, as long as it's fairly even. Obviously Korak will be a higher level, Korak was our starter essentially, but a nice evenly levelled party so we can always choose what we want to do. Hop's obviously a little disappointed, but you know, we're rivals, we're meant to push each other. Despite the defeat, he's pretty happy. He hands us a league card to show that there's no hard feelings, and uh, he heads off towards Turfield and the next gym. So after our battle with Hop, I decide to head to the Pokemon Center to heal up, slightly missing the door on the way in. Heal up the party, ready for us to head off to Route 3 and the next gym challenge. This is the screen for uh, the healing in the Pokemon Center, so you get a nice view of your party in the party order, which is always useful. We get told that there's a rare Pokemon at Wedgehurst Station. This is the Isle of Armour DLC uh, introduction, but we won't be doing that for a while. So as we head off towards Route 3, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And uh, I've been The Ski. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all have a lovely day.